Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another video. This will be number 13, and um, <laughs> it feels so like I'm kind of stuck on um, this character, Jeremiah Ryan, and in gene genealogy, you, you know, you're never really quite done. You're not done with a person. You're not done with an area. You're not done with learning about something that goes with all of it, but I think that today's the day I'm going to probably make a decision and um, choose no, another location, another part of, of the family. But I wanted to catch up on some of the things that I've been doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like probably like many days I've been doing it, but so um, Jerry, Jeremiah, um, who we're waiting to find out, you know, what happened to his feet. <clears throat> I've went through pages and pages and pages of the newspaper, and I could not find an update on that scenario. When I kind of look at what was going on in his life after that happened, I kind of came to the conclusion he probably didn't have to have his feet amputated. He was a very active man and um, in in you know, really involved in the community. So for right now, we're going to kind of think, okay, maybe Jerry was able to salvage um, and um, heal from the FOSS fight. But let me tell you, I, you know, I'm not going to quit looking. Um, you know, <laughs> if you've been bit by genealogy, you know, you know, that it's, you might be laying in bed and you think another place you might search. And I have to get up in the middle of the night and just check it out. So, um, you know, since I've retired, I, I have a lot more leeway to do that than, uh, you know, while I was working. Um, there was a lot of times that, you know, I really had to have my energy for my job and my 25 workers. And so then I would, you know, put it off until much later and sometimes maybe forget about it. But I'm very excited about doing um, these videos for that, that very reason to have documentation of some of the more fascinating um, parts of the people other than, you know, I have done genealogy and I do it very, very much by the book in, in regards to um, my sources and how documenting things. And um, I've went, you know, I've taken some really powerful classes and including DNA was the last um, uh, class I took in Boulder, Colorado, which was really fascinating. But um, most of my records are all in Ancestry, but at the same time, I do go and look at other platforms and watch other um, other genealogists to see, you know, how, what they're presenting. Um, I know that stories has showed up, you know, lately at, at the conferences, that they're encouraging people to talk, especially to people who have not passed yet, and ask as many questions as you can so you get that part of, you know, who the person actually was. But on these people that have passed, I, I find it interesting. I, I mean, there's there's the other part of the people who are still alive that have the memory. They might not be the person, for sure, in um, any of my videos, but they they may have stories that lead me down the path. So I spent a lot of time on Jerry and his feet and, and um, <laughs> we had lots of laughs about it. Uh, my grandson, who's 11, Matthias, um, and I, you know, I've shared some of these stories with him and his eyes kind of like, well, you know, at one point he kind of pointed down at his arm and he said, Grammy, you, you mean there's, there, part of me's Irish? from Ireland, and, and I had to say yes, because it comes from many different directions. You know, he's he hasn't had his gene, genealogy or his, gen, you know, genes checked or did ancestry or anything like that. But but his mother is from, was born in Norway and raised in Norway, and but her mom was actually English. And then if you go back into mine and you look at the percentage, there's a lot of Irish too. So yeah, the kid probably has a little, I know he likes to kind of do that dance that the Irish people do. Um, 
that's very enter entertaining. But so back to Jerry, and um, he lived a, a one more year after Catherine died, and Kate was the one that was uh, attacked by the large sheep. And but it was interesting because I found a couple more articles on him that, you know, I mean, so, I was reading more stories about other people in that same period of time in that same community area. And let me tell you, they had feuds going on. They were, um, they all had guns. They all would get mad at each other. And um, yeah, there's a certain thing with the, maybe the, the, most of them were miners or farmers, but um, they were a little bit rowdy. <laughs> But at the same time, you know, it's nice when you read obituaries and you read um, wills. And um, so one of the things that came up about Ryan, um, you know, the family coming to Montana and him leaving Ireland and, and looking for a better future for himself at the time and, and then his family. So when he first evidently um, got to Montana, he was a foreman. Uh, of the first telegraph poles that they were putting up for tele, uh, you know, for telegraphing, and um, you know, the fact that he was a foreman. I mean, you know, you don't get those kind of positions unless you're, you know, you have something going for yourself and you know how to deal with people. And um, so I think I think he was, you know, he had those good qualities in him. Um, so in his I'll just read, it's just a quick one, this is, and they still, every, all of his um, newspaper articles are all Jerry, you know, which I think is, you know, versus Jeremiah. <laughs> so he was definitely a Jerry. And he died, let's see, it's a um, Jerry uh, Ryan, excuse me, died um, at the age of 71. He was a pioneer rancher of the Deer Valley Lodge area. He died at his ranch home Thursday evening. He came to Butte in 1880 as foreman of the first crew to erect the, the telegraph poles in Montana. He mined for gold from 88, um, 1881 to 1883 and then established himself this ranch. So maybe maybe he was a um, you know that was his whole goal was to work hard to get you know work in the mines to, but then he bought the ranch and when he died it was, he actually had um, I think it was twenty five no no it was fourteen hundred acres which was a pretty large piece of land he um, Mr Ryan was regarded at one time as one of the state's largest cattle ranchers that says something you know when you're Montana, those, you know, I think there's more um, cattle people around from what I can understand, but uh, but I always know that there's that aspect of the sheep people and especially a lot of sheep people from Ireland were very um, rowdy and very, um, and, you know, they expected that they could eat the grass of the cattle farmers, which, you know, I think I, I might have shared this earlier, but I always remember this, I think, when I was taking history it, it, in the college level, and it, it for some reason it just stuck with me about that the sheep, when they eat the grass, they eat the roots, they they eat the whole thing. And so then there's not that, you know, next year, next crop, then the grass grows back. And, and so the cattle, the cattle only eat the top grass. So they leave it. And so, I mean, I can see that causing a feud or two, you know, it's like, um, so let's see, um, he is survived by several daughters and sons, including, um, he had a Jeremiah, which was his son. Um, oh, <laughs> I thought this was interesting too, uh, including Jerry Ryan center on the Montana university football team this last season. So, you know, <laughs> it's already it's interesting, you know, people write these tributes and, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have put them as football people necessarily. They seem so, so much involved with 
Uh, and I don't think gold mining, especially as something you do, um, you know, stay out late or you, you know, you would be very involved with wanting to find as much gold as you could find. And there was a lot of gold to find back then. So I had done a little bit of research about that because um, I got kind of interesting. I know there was the mines that they were working, but there's also sapphires around in Phillipsburg and it's all around this one kind of, you know, it's miles, but it's really a, a area where there's a lot of mining going on. And, and now still in Phillipsburg, you can go and stop and you can, they bring the dirt in from the gulch and, and they, you shake it with a screen and you, you can find sapphires and I, and some of them are beautiful. And when I was reading about them, it was interesting because um, the miners evidently were so much going for the gold that they didn't even think anything about these wonderful blue stones that, the, you know, they would just toss them away. But this one man evidently felt that he put a um, in a cigar box all these blue stones that were pretty. But they were basically looking at the gold, which would have been like shinier, brighter, and more money and all that. And um, and then he sent it back east and had it tested. And so this is when the, it turned into the sapphire scenario. And I always wondered if, you know, I know there's certain things that they mine when they're, you know, like miners and the companies, everything like that. But it's their piles of the dirt they bring out that you can find pyrite or, or you know, something else, something that's not of value to our society right now but they're beautiful and the rock counters love them and and i've been to another, another a lot of those in the tailings and just look through them and so this was interesting just kind of adding that to the fact that they were you know they were down in these creek beds and the gulches and as the water went by they were either using a screen or whatever sluice is what it's called now but i don't know for sure <laughs> i keep i keep conveying these pieces of information you know, in these videos, and then I realize there's a piece of it I don't know. So probably when I get done, I will, you know, research it more because I'm curious and I want to know as much as possible about what's going on in these areas. And and then I'll come back and report to you. So if I remember, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to find out kind of how, how they were getting the gold. I know that there was this story, and I know I think I told it in the last video about when the the mine collapsed and the guy was going to suffocate and all the miners just kept pulling the dirt pulling the dirt and they saved his life so i know that they were doing those dangerous mining type of operations where you know if they weren't shoring everything up with extra wood and they weren't paying attention to you know was there enough oxygen in the actual mine that um to for them to breathe and I, I remember, even as a young person, always hearing that they take a canary, a little bird like a canary, and put it in the mines. And if it died, then they knew that they better get out of there and there wasn't enough oxygen, which was, you know, I liked little birdies at the time. And it's so it was hard for me to imagine that, you know, they had this bird, and, but if it died, then they were out of there. So um, the other one, was in it, it says final a will and testament it's very small um but it was interesting and i i hope you don't mind me reading it to you the will of the late jerry ryan well-known stockman of of the racetrack now i keep running into that and that's another thing i'm going to probably do more research at some point on because a few miles down the road where some other of the family ended up, they were very involved in horse racing. And there was jockeys. I think one of the our ancestors actually was a jockey. And, you know, I'm about five feet tall, <laughs> probably shrinking at this age. But, you know, I understand a little bit about jockeys. But I don't know what reference they actually was making of that. Um was admitted to probate in district court Saturday afternoon. Um, the executor said, read the will and, the, and 
passed out the information. The state consists of approximately uh, 1,400 acres of land in Powell County and is well stocked with cattle. According to, um, boy, this is kind of tiny print. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that a little bit that I can't read. And so what he did was he named two daughters, Mrs. Alice Allnut, which is mine, ours, the family of <laughs> that I'm working on. Um, and he left $500 for her and $500 for one of his other daughters. And the rest of the estate is to be equally divided between the four sons, Thomas, Jerry, Patrick, and Joseph. So I haven't said very much about this next little sentence because I can't figure it out for sure exactly how it how it works. And I've even looked at other people's decisions they've made. Now, I don't have a habit of just copying whatever somebody else makes, that's for sure. But it said a stepson, John R. Coverdale of Anaconda, is to receive $500. So one of the first um, census, I think it was 1910, when I first was beginning to work on the family and they were, you know, they, they showed the head of the family and, and that would have been Jeremiah or Jerry, but on that it was, no, it was probably still Jerry, but you know, on this really important papers, it was, his name was Jeremiah and, and, and then he, without a nickname, it showed him and then it showed the wife and it showed this, this boy, this John R. Coverdale, and it showed on the census as a stepson, but but I couldn't I can't you know and then that there's nothing more about him necessarily other than he was a stepson, and then it showed all these other kids that were Ray, uh, Ryan was their last name and so they were you know there were several girls and several boys, um, but to be honest I would not feel good about, you know, passing on the information or making a judgment call about this covered deal. And I did quite a bit of, you know, researching and checking some of the records to see. Um, and there was a, yeah, I'm not even, I'm probably not even going to go there until I really figure it out sometime. I don't think that it's um, necessarily as important in my particular um, history work that I'm doing to actually know, but it was interesting. There's census records. They usually say who the people are and how old they are. And usually if you read carefully and use a magnifying glass, there's a lot of different things that they show, but they also show where the mother was born, where the father was born, where the, where the person that you're looking at was born. And a lot of times they'll say what their occupation is. So <laughs> In Ancestry, there's a place where you can actually, they've taken the information and kind of gleaned out about what they think that people would be interested in. So they would, it would just be very, you know, in very um, tight. And, and a census rec record is usually handwritten, so you, you get into some little situations. But I always push those buttons and I want to see the original. So many of the errors that I've seen, I've been able to go back and understand how the errors were made by sometimes it's just a fancy writing. They make swirls and, you know, and it was very popular then and very, um, you know, when you look at the possibility right now that cursive is going away, my my grandson has let me know that, you know, if he if he's reading something and he gets to cursive, he, he, he stops and asks. One one other thing that um, we were talking about was factories. And I don't know if you're getting used to me enough to know. I mean, I can see it on my face when I know that I am um, not like I'm not quite as fast about remembering exactly. And I say something and then. And then after the video's over, I think, oh, God, I could have said that. I could have said that. So we were talking about the factories and how dangerous they were in the mining that was going on in Montana. 
and and there used to be and there's still some really dangerous mines mines i've been around some you know that are down in um i saw some down in idaho i think and and um and they were very dangerous looking they weren't you know but i'm and i I got to thinking about it. And so, you know how I collect, I make jewelry and I collect stones to make jewelry. So it's a combination. Those are probably the two most important things that I end up spending as a hobby and, and enjoying my life is making jewelry, rock collecting, and then doing genealogy. So I had also went to a mine where this was down in New Mexico and it wasn't an active mine. It had they had actually closed it down, and so you couldn't you couldn't go in except we belonged to a rock club uh, out of Albuquerque at the time. And this mine was down in um, uh, Socorro, which is um, the mining college is down there. And so they let the group of us that was the club go in to this mine, <laughs> and. Might have been my first mine, actually. But you had to get down on your hands and knees and crawl up the hill and then down into this first room. It was a big room. And so they took us all down in that room. And, you know, you, you're beginning to not see too much of anything. It's getting dark. Um, damp. It was damp, I remember. And then, then everybody gets ready. And so then we got to go up another hill and down into this other large room. And we all had flashlights. And then they, um, I don't, we still had them. I think we had them in the first room um, off. And then in the next room, when we all got settled in, then you turn your, your um, flashlight off. And so we all just very patiently sit there waiting for them to say what was going to happen next. So they said, okay, everybody turn on, the, turn on your lights. And, um, and as we turned the whole, the whole ceiling, the whole room was um, crystals. And it was fluorite, which they were mining fluorite because when you think of fluorite and toothpaste and there was multiple things that they were using fluorite for but it it was totally amazing but it, <laughs> there's a lot of rattlesnakes in that area so it was like um yeah that was a little bit challenging so i've been in a couple mines like that in the area that i was in a coal mine down um, in madras in new mexico and then where where i grew up um i used to go on the the tours, I've went on several tours at Weyerhaeuser, where they make plywood, where they um, make bark dust, where they make, um, you know, the, you, you kind of go from the logs that come down in the log trucks and they dump them in the Columbia River and then they take them out. But the whole thing, I mean, they have a lot of safety protection, but it's still a very, very dangerous place to live. And even the smell of the pulp and the the chemicals and everything. Um, there's just some dangerous things out there that that we probably all are aware of. But um, I wanted to share with you that I've been in more than, you know, because I said about Vietnam and Vietnam was, I mean, it was pure, probably more like Montana in a way, but even maybe more primitive. And um, they, they didn't have hats or gloves or anything. So the next thing, you know, that I'm going to talk about a little bit is I've been thinking, now, I don't feel like I'm done with Ryan's. I don't feel like I'm done with the All Nuts. I don't feel like I, you know, as I move through these different surnames, I don't, I know that I would never be really able to say, I'm absolutely sure I have all the information. And, and then I go and visit the places, and then that adds to what I want to add to my actual data genealogy. I make a real distinction between these stories of, you know, I try to be as accurate as possible with them, and I like to go out and experience the, 
you know, what it's like to stand in those grounds and, and go to the cemeteries. But, you know, my genealogy is um, very clean as I can possibly make it as far as the actual data. And so I'm doing this more to make them kind of come to life and have a better understanding of who these people were and what they were, what they were confronted with and what they had to deal with. So what I've decided, um, you know, what I've been doing so far is, is a lot of the all nuts and um, which is on my mother's side. And this goes through the Ryan and that still um, all nuts. And um, so it's kind of a combination. So I'm, I'm choosing it based on a trip I'd like to make and um, and and the history, the history and a better understanding. So my grandmother on my dad's side, um, what her last name was or her surname is Chase. And I followed a lot of their travels around where before they went to Michigan. So they were kind of in Michigan doing one thing, but they actually came from um, New York. And there's uh, Herkimer Diamonds that are mined out of Herkimer. And so I think that's going to be the next place <laughs> that we're going to um, jump into. And so probably by my next video, I'll probably do, maybe I'll do some catching up on, on just because afterwards I kind of clean up all what I, my research papers and, and um, start thinking about the next video. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And I, I just have a blast doing it. I think that's the part that um, has been the funnest about it is it's fun. It's, you know, and I've always liked the genealogy and the dates of the births and the dates of the death and the, but for me, I'm kind of that people person. And so I, I like to have a better understanding of who these people were. So stay tuned. You'll hear back from me, you know, within a few days, I'm sure. <laughs> have a good evening. Thanks. Bye.